Hey there, I'm Paul, also known on this channel as Valley Flying, and in this video, I'm breaking down my jujitsu matches from this past weekend. Now, some of you that follow this channel for my normal gaming content may or may not know that I've also been training jujitsu for almost four years now, and this past weekend, I competed in my very first IBJJF tournament, and the IBJJF is one of the most prestigious jujitsu organizations in the world. And because this is my first tournament with them, a little unsure what to expect because I do know that there's some differences with their tournaments and the local tournaments that I've entered. And this was also my first time competing without a Gion. And there are differences in the styles of what you're able to do and able not to do without the Gion. So there's a few differences this weekend. So if you're ready for it, let's go break down the Nogi Pants Master 4 Blue Belt Heavyweight Division. And as we go and check out my first opponent here uh this was the number one seed in the division i was the last seed in division because i've never competed for the ibjjf before and uh, this person had a lot of matches very very seasoned competitor and this rash guard that i'm wearing interesting note smells a lot like perfume like my wife's perfume because as you see her head poking out of the background right here she's actually wearing my uh second rash guard that i brought because the what i was planning to compete in it didn't have enough blue and one of the rules for the ibjjf is uh if you, you have to have a lot of your color of your belt on your rash guard and i just had a black rash guard and uh they said you can't compete in that because you're a blue belt so i actually gave uh i actually pulled this one out which is a blue and it has a white and red and they said that's not good enough so i actually looked into the stands saw that she was wearing this and she was nice enough to actually take the shirt off her back. Let me wear this. So I'm actually wearing this small, medium shirt uh, that's smelling like perfume right now. And this, uh, let's begin this match with all that context and background there. <laughs> Why this uh, went like this. All right, so uh, we first start off here shaking hands. And I'm just trying to look for the breakdown here. Let's go to this uh, other angle there. As we see, I'm just trying to get a good collar uh, tie on him. And he actually goes down and tries to go after my head. But what that allows me to do is get this underhook here. And then I just attack. I see he has weak base and I just bring him down to the mat. That is going to be worth two points there. And as you see the score there, there are two points on the scoreboard transition. And uh, I'm not wanting him to... Uh, get his knee under. So I'm really trying to block his knee either with my hip or as you see, sometimes I move my hand there. We call this position cross-eyed two at our academy uh, because I did watch some of his matches. I know this guy likes to really slice that knee in there to try to get his guard back. And I'm just trying to stop him from getting his guard back at this point. Uh, trying to set up submissions. He's really holding me tight and uh, making it hard to really set up what i want i'm looking for the kimura on this far side here this arm which is like a shoulder attack that i'm going for i'm just really trying to maintain the position because he's really really uh, squirming around and trying to uh get out and there was a very weak mount attempt i'm still working his arm trying to find uh some different uh submissions that i could go for there and interesting thing here if you look in the background of this uh shot here there you see my daughter leading on the guardrail there and she stands up and boom the guard goes the 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 mat goes down the ref's laughing stuff but as of this this is the exact moment though that i'm going for this uh kimura i'm actually looking that actually americana and i start to get it and he just turns i don't have the angle i think i'm gonna get it but he's doing a really good job of getting to his side which makes it hard so the ref just gives me an advantage there you see that i'm up now and let's go to the reverse angle there, uh, trying to set this up. And it's really, really, uh, yeah, it's not not finding the angle that I want. If we look at this one, you can see there, um, he actually starts to attack my arm. If we go back to this angle, uh, I don't notice what he's doing. I'm, I'm working on my attack, and as he starts to set this up, I don't notice what he's doing. He's actually getting a grip on my arm and trying to set up an Americana of, my, of his own. If we go back, one thing that I also didn't notice is when he shifts this, when he shifts for that Americana attack, he actually gets this leg around my leg there, which makes it hard for me to turn in. If we go to this angle there, I'm trying to turn in, but his leg is wrapped around my leg there. If 
I have to really pull this. He, this is actually a legit threat. I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, oh man, if I don't address this right now, doesn't matter all the dominating that I've been doing so far and maintaining the position. I could just lose this match. So there, there we go. I, I actually get the control back, get the arm back and spin out. And now I'm safe. The danger is gone. You can see there, he doesn't have that lock uh, solid anymore. Now I'm trying to get his arm to go for an attack of my own. And don't get it. He's, he's defending pretty well. And yes, now we pop up into almost a side mount position. I go neon belly there. I'll try to do a neon belly. He brings his knee up so I can't get to mount, which is a better position where I'm on top of him. I start in and try to do a north-south choke there, and that leads to this mount. So where the north-south choke is, is um, he lifts his head up. I bring my hand under to try to choke him. He turns. I know it's not there, so I immediately go to mount. Uh, it was not a very solid uh, submission attempt, but I knew that. I just wanted to defend and make it move wrong, and I got to what I wanted to do in setting up this uh, position in mount. Now, I try to get this arm bar. I noticed that he's leaving his arm up. If you look at this arm behind my head there, that is uh, just kind of giving me the arm. So I try to pop up into S mount, but instead but i miss and i uh what he does is get this uh leg back what i want is to try to get my foot under his elbow but he keeps it planted to the mat doesn't allow me to get my foot under and he gets and this is a good move that he does he gets this leg under and he gets me back to half guard which is good for uh me later because i'd later get back to mount but uh yeah, it's not good because guys, I don't have as many attacks here. In our academy, we talk about the half guard position as more of a 50-50. So the person on the top and the person on the bottom both have equal chance to uh, attack each other. So I don't want to really be attacking from there. I'd like to be in a dominant position before I attack. I'm just trying to free my foot there to get back to mount. I'm trying to free it. Uh, I keep circling and boom, we finally get that position back. We go to this reverse angle. I start working that americana on the far side there uh it's not really something that i want to finish this is more of a threat to open up the other side the far side arm so that i could uh, start to work ahead an arm choke because i was working that there i start to pull the arm up try to get my hand my head on the other side of his arm and i'm just trying to look for position and now he makes another mistake eyes look here if we look at this right here he leaves that arm up i'm trying to rotate around i pin the arm and there we go there's the finish there, and he tapped. So if we look at that, that's the arm bar. If we look at this from the reverse angle, uh, sitting on him, I trap the hand. Once I get the hand back, this is a very loose sit-up. Uh, this normally should be planted right to my chest, but this is very loose, but I knew I had the wrist. So as long as I had the wrist, I knew I could still finish this. So I have the wrist there, and I have the angle, find where his thumb is, and with that, with that uh, arm, you want to go opposite of thumb arm so if you have the wrist control the break is going to be in this direction there all right so that is the first match now it's just waiting for the next opponents to go and then i'm going to supposed to face the winner of that but that's not how it went down because this is my second opponent he actually did not have a match he actually won his first match by disqualification because his opponent didn't even show up so this guy is totally fresh here uh i don't use too much energy i wasn't very tired after that first match um just kind of felt like a hard roll at that point so uh, I've, I've been controlling my energy a lot better in competition uh I don't, if you guys have watched any of my previous matches uh using a lot of energy getting this big energy dump then i'm just exhausted but i feel like controlling my energy a lot better in this match uh so wasn't too worried about the fatigue going into this match there we start with the fist bump and we we're talking a long time this is we probably it felt like we waited an hour before the match started uh because they just kept giving his opponent time to show up time to show up he never did so finally disqualified him and then here is our match and that was another reason that i wasn't that tired either because uh it was a long time between the matches so i felt that i was pretty fresh let's go to this angle see a little better view i'm just trying to get the head control my stand-up is not very good what i'm trying to do is really uh control my base and not let my base get broken down i don't want to get uh, that lean too much when my head is going too far uh in front of my hips so 
Yes, he's trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to do a snap down, I'm trying to do an arm drag. I'm looking for a single leg. I'm just looking at whatever he's going to give me, but I want to stay safe because I noticed in practice, whenever I drop my head, there was a guillotine attempt coming from uh, some of my training partners. So I didn't want to drop my head and have to fight the guillotine or worse, uh, losing to a guillotine. So just trying to uh, get position here. We're grappling, we're working. He's staying safe as well. And we're, we actually stay a little too safe here with this, trying not to make a mistake here. Uh, he's a very strong guy. If you look at him, he's, he's pretty thick there. He's actually thicker than me, a little taller than him, which is why we're in the same weight class. But he's a, he was a strong guy. Couldn't really get uh, any of the stuff that I was working on with, in training with this. Uh, but yeah, just trying to stay patient, letting him make a mistake. And at this point, the ref doesn't like what he sees. Calls both of us for stalling here as I try to go for that single leg. And in my mind, I'm actually thinking, oh, I was right about to get that single leg and the ref broke us up. But after watching this video, uh, my opponent stopped and that's when I went for the single leg. So that, that memory was uh, incorrect there. All right, so we've both been called for stalling here. We're both have a penalty and we're locking up again. We're looking for the best, uh, just the best submission to get the uh, angle that you want. I'm uh, trying to get uh, underhook. I'm still trying to get head position to drop his head down. See if I can get a guillotine here. Uh, he goes for this Russian tie. You can see the angle, this Russian tie that he gets. He actually gets uh, this arm here. He's uh, trapping my arm. But what that allows me to do, that actually uh, helps me. Because when he traps that arm with that Russian tie, that actually allows me to go around, break his base, and go for that guillotine right there. Uh, actually didn't have my second arm because he has that Russian tie, as you can see, right there. So I immediately, no, I can't finish the guillotine, and I go for a overhook on his arm there to try to uh, break his base down even further, put all my weight on him, and he shoots. He goes for that single leg, and I sprawl out, go around, and immediately try to take his back there. And the big thing that we're fighting for right now is to get this hooks. Right now, if you can see, don't have any points, but I need to get my heel into his hip here. And he's fighting it. He's blocking that with his elbow. He's blocking that with his hand. So what I do, I try to get the choke. He moves his hand. I wait for him to move his hand. As soon as he moves his hand up to his neck, he's going for the choke, not fighting the other hand. Boom, that uh, heel goes in. And that is the points there. Now I have his back. There comes the points from the ref. And now I'm just starting to work this choke here. Uh, he does a really good job of defending the choke. So we see the other angle there. I'm trying to trap his hands to get them down so he can't defend the choke, but he's really strong. He keeps bringing them up. So I'm trying to get them down to his hip, but he's strong. He keeps bringing that back up to his neck to uh, defend that choke there. So I'm working it, trying to get my hand position, trying to get my hands under his neck to get that uh, choke there. I've got one hand down, but it's not the position I want. I start with that body triangle, which is uh, right over there, and it, it just makes it hard for breathe, to breathe for him. And he told me after the match, if I had a little higher, I would have sucked his energy, and he would have had nothing left and wouldn't have been offended the choke. Body triangle is not something I really use offensively. I use it more to control the position just because it's so hard for them to get out of with that body triangle. I'm trying to get that choke in there and it's still not going. He's really defending that well. Moving his head, trying to move his hand. Uh, yeah, as you can see this grip here, his hand is way too high. So even though I got a good grip on his arm, he, he's, uh, he still has that hand high and is still able to defend. But at this point, I think this is the point where... We're almost in here. And yeah, I actually have to switch my arms here. I'm trying to take my arm out, trying to get that arm in under his chin to get that choke, trying to work that. He keeps defending though. I attack the other arm. He goes back. I switch the triangle on the other side. One of the defenses for the triangle is to get this lock here. You get this lock and bring it down to the ground. So as he switches it, what I'm doing is switching this triangle to bring that to the top side so the lock is not trapped underneath uh, both of us. So yeah, I'm still trying to work the angle trying to move his hands there And what I do what I want to do is get both my hands up so I could attack from both sides Now I have both my hands above his arms. I can attack from both sides I start to get the grip here and boom He turns right into there and this is the point that it should have been finished I know how to finish this now, but I didn't at the time 
So I just start squeezing. I try for the rear naked. I try to do this to try to cut off, uh, to just change the angle here to cut off both the carotid arteries for that choke. That, uh, I, I did not use that long enough. And boom. What I did, and I really have a good position here. If you look at his chin, it's aligned with my elbow. So what I could have done is just kept cranking it that direction. Normally in the gym, we don't uh, do cranks though, because cranks are necessarily uh, not the best thing. We try to get chokes in the gym. So I don't really work cranks as much. They, they can hurt your partner's neck. So in training, we usually don't do them. But in competitions or in the street, cranks are totally okay. And I don't have a lot of experience before this competition. But yesterday, we drilled a lot of this stuff. So uh, I would have finished this today if we had this match. But yeah, I could have just taken his uh, head, turned it that way. But I'd let it go. And yeah, there's not the choke there. So now I got to get that head position. Because if his head is close to the mat, uh, he's in a good position. There, I get that head position again. He's uh, fighting for that the other side. I switch a triangle there. Let's go to the other angle there. And uh, I got the body triangle. He's trying to uh, really, really fight. And at this point, he tries to get up. I uh, don't allow him. And I take his... Uh, I keep on his back. And now I'm like, all right, I got to switch to something. So I'm actually trying to set up this arm bar. And this is a very bad arm bar switch attempt. Uh, we're going, I still have that position and oh my goodness, that was so bad. That was like so much space there. So what I wanted to do was keep this arm, throw my right leg over his head, pin him down and then finish the arm bar kind of like the, uh, the, the gentleman finished, but, uh, is very loose. The setup was not proper and he escapes immediately. He goes to guard. And yeah, now I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not good. <laughs> and here we see that weird uh, armbar escape attempt from the from the other angle there. And at this point, the score obviously is wrong here. The, the scoring is not correct. But uh, as you can see here, I was very disappointed. I wanted to get the finish. I knew there wasn't a lot of time left. And to set up a submission from guard for me, it takes a little while. I'm not, my submissions from guard aren't that quick, so. It's like, oh man. And he tells me, good job. And I let me look at the score, but I'm like, damn it. Oh, I wanted to submit you. So that was that was our match there. If you could look at the scoreboard there, the scoreboard on this is correct. They have me with a four. And there it is. There is the championship. There's the win. Some sloppiness there because I'm a blue belt. But uh, yes, I do need to work on my attacks to get them a lot more dialed in so I can get finishes next time. But that is it, guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a great rest of the day. Here is the gold medal from the Nogi Pans 2022 blue belt heavyweight division. Masters 4. Um... Not the most prestigious thing, but it is, uh, I'm pretty proud of it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this breakdown and I will see you guys next time. But give me that Hulk fist bump before you go and have a great rest of your day. Hulk fist bump, Valley of Lion out. <laughs>